Hi, my name is Shannon Williams, and this presentation is an overview of creative technology pedagogy. In this video, I'll go over what creative technology pedagogy is, who should use it, and what it might look like in the classroom. I'll talk about ways to foster and support creativity in the classroom through technology. This will be achieved through developing a student's confidence and providing experiences that scaffold the learning. And finally, I'll offer a few lesson and activity suggestions that you can try in your classroom to get those creative juices flowing. So let's dive in. Let's start by talking about what creativity is and why it's important. Albert Einstein said that creativity is intelligence having fun. I think we can all agree that he was a pretty smart guy. So let's start there. Creativity is an important part of our intelligence. Unlike other species, our brains allow us to create and build upon our ideas. Our intelligence, along with our imagination, feeds our creative output. This isn't limited to just the arts, as it's often assumed. Creativity is seen in many areas, like science, engineering, technology, business, education, and countless other disciplines. Creativity allows us to advance our ideas forward and make progress towards solving problems and achieving goals. To better prepare ourselves to support and foster creativity in students, it helps to understand how the brain works. There are three networks in the brain. The first is the executive attention network. This is the part of the brain that holds information, maintains strategies, and keeps us from accepting the obvious solution to a task or a problem. Next is the imagination network. This is where our daydreams and imagination live. It's also the part of the brain that allows us to imagine what someone else will think or feel when they have a similar experience. And finally, there's the salience network. This is the place in the brain that tags ideas or experiences as interesting or meaningful. It is this part of the brain that supplies our imagination with ideas that we can build on. To attend to the executive network, we as teachers can provide students with experiences that develop their skills and competencies. The imagination network needs time to be free. Students should be given time to daydream and imagine new answers and solutions that will use their skills. We can support the needs of the salience network by providing students with examples and inspiration of what is possible when their skills are applied. So when we focus on developing skills, giving students time to dream, and providing them with meaningful examples, we're providing an environment that supports creativity. With that, we can hope that confidence will follow. Self-doubt is a great inhibitor to creativity. In my experience, this element is best addressed during the development of skills. If students feel competent in their skills, they're more likely to appreciate and understand inspirational examples and imagine or dream up their own interpretations. So what does this all look like in a classroom using technology? I've collected some of my favorite lessons and activities that allow students to express themselves creatively with technology. Each lesson or activity starts with a focus on building skills. I start small to ensure success. This helps to build confidence. Then I provide additional learning opportunities that introduce another skill. Each lesson takes small steps that build upon previous skills. This might sound like it takes a lot of time and sometimes it does, but not for all students. Many students see the logic and are able to move ahead on their own. But for those that need more support, this small step approach helps to keep more students engaged. It's beyond the scope of this presentation to give specific lesson plan details for each example that I will share. I will offer more detail on each topic in future videos, but for this presentation, I hope to give you a starting point or a place to look for ideas and inspiration. Let's start with coding. Coding allows students to use computers to solve problems or create new experiences for other users. It works like a language that gives directions to computers to perform tasks. The possibilities of what students can develop with computers and coding languages are limitless. Learning to code starts with skills and language development. There are programs designed specifically for kids that can help to achieve this language development. 
They use an approach called block coding that's very intuitive for kids. Some of the most popular platforms for learning to code are Scratch, Snap, and Swift. Scratch and Snap are best suited to younger students in grades 3 through 7. They're both web-based programs, so they'll run on any device that connects to the web, including Chromebooks. For those interested, Scratch also has a version called Scratch Junior that can be used on tablets for ages 5 to 7, so even the youngest students can get into coding. Swift, on the other hand, is probably better for intermediate to advanced users in middle school through high school. This program will need to be downloaded onto a computer or an iPad, so that's something to be considered. Even if you aren't familiar or comfortable with coding, you really shouldn't hesitate to give it a try. There's a good deal of prepared teaching material for teachers available on each of these platforms. All three were designed to get kids started with coding. They're very supportive and generous communities that make it easy to get kids started in computer programming. I've taught music for nearly 20 years, so this topic is what I'm most passionate about. Technology can enable a student to compose music on a level that would have previously seemed impossible. They're no longer limited by their instrumental performance skills. Technology has removed that barrier. With digital audio workstations or DAWs, online drum machines, synthesizers, and similar tools, students can now have a full orchestra at their fingertips. In my classroom, I focus on developing students' understanding of the elements of music and then show them how to use digital tools to express those ideas. Tools that can allow students to get started with music production include BandLab, Google Songmaker, and Bleepbox, just to name a few. All of these apps have the ability to engage beginning to advanced students. All of the tools are web-based, meaning they will work on any device, including Chromebooks. And they're all free. BandLab is a fully functioning DAW with the ability to compose with loops, record live instrument or voices, and edit sound files. Not only can this program create music, but you can also consider using it to record a podcast complete with intro and outro music. Google Songmaker is one of my favorites. It's really a very simple tool that offers so many learning opportunities. I use it to have my students create or dictate rhythms and melodies. They arrange music templates that I provide, or they simply make something that looks cool. If you're not a music teacher, this one might be a little harder to structure, but the kids love it. You can find plenty of YouTube videos with songs that others have created or recreated in the Songmaker. Students can simply copy those until they get the hang of the app, and then they can start to work on developing their own songs. Bleepbox is another cool tool. Just like Swift in the coding apps, this page is also a more advanced app. It would be best enjoyed by students who have outgrown Google Songmaker. They're quite similar in how sounds are entered into the page, but Bleepbox has more room for entry and advanced settings. Creating visual art with technology can take many forms. Digital drawing on tablets, graphic vector design, layout and publication design, and even 3D design are all possible with technology tools. Many of these projects can be completed with online tools, making them possible on Chromebooks too. Three powerful online tools that make creating visual art online possible are Canva, Tinkercad, and Klecky. Canva is a graphic design program that allows users to create presentations, videos, posters, social media posts, logos, and branding, among other things. It also houses an education platform that can tie into Google Classroom, making it possible to deliver and grade assignments that were created in Canva. Tinkercad is an incredibly powerful 3D design program. By dragging and dropping shapes onto the work plane, new objects can be created. While not required, these designs can later be sent to a 3D printer for production. And even if you don't have a 3D printer, there's still a great deal to be learned from being able to design in 3D. Like many of the apps shared in this discussion, Tinkercad boasts a large and supportive community. There's a wealth of information online to support teachers who want to include 3D design in their classroom activities. 
Klecky is an online paint tool that's free and doesn't require an account or sign-in. Users can create images using a variety of drawing and painting tools, then export the files for use or printing in other locations. Like visual art, video dominates our digital landscape. Providing students with the ability to create meaningful videos amplifies their voice in the digital world. Three of my favorite video creating tools include WeVideo, Flipgrid, and the stop motion app Cloud Stop Motion. WeVideo is a full-featured video editing program that works online with traditional computers, tablets, and even Chromebooks. It does require a paid subscription to access all of the features, but it's well worth it if you or your school have the means. WeVideo rivals other well-known video editing software like iMovie and boasts an impressive collection of ready-made learning experiences for teachers to share with students. In addition, it also features an impressive library of stock video, images, and music that students can use in their projects. Flipgrid is an online video sharing platform that allows teachers to post discussion prompts and engage students in meaningful dialogue. It's also a great place to collect performance-based responses from students, building an online portfolio. Flipgrid features fun accessories with the ability to add stickers, text, and other filters. It also has the option to record audio alone, making it a good tool for podcast-style activities. Cloud Stop Motion is a nifty app that lets you create stop motion style animation with a Chromebook or other web connected device. If you aren't familiar with what stop motion is, check out this video that a student of mine made a couple years ago. The art of photography can sometimes be taken for granted due to its ever present role in our daily lives. As teachers, we can help our students better understand the role that effective photography can play in helping them to communicate their ideas to those who view their work. Pixlr and Polar are two apps that can be used to edit and enhance students' photography. With Pixlr, students can edit their photos with traditional digital editing tools, remove backgrounds, create animations, use their photos in design templates, make photo collages, and add filters and effects. The app is free and does not require a sign up or a sign in in order to create. Polar features powerful filters, lighting effects, auto detects for facial correction, overlays, masking, and other unique effects. Like the other programs discussed in this presentation, this app is also web-based, so it can be used on any device that connects to the internet. It doesn't require a sign up or sign in when creating. Thanks for watching. I hope that you found some useful information in this presentation. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. I'm happy to answer any of them.